Gate Board Director meeting call it to order. We'll start with the approval of the minutes of the prior meeting, December 20th, and we get a motion approved. So moved. Mike, a second. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. Any additions, contractions? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we'll move on to uh, recognitions. Yeah, we have our, We only have one. <laughs> You're on a stage, Mark. <laughs> That's your cue, Mark. That's your cue. <laughs> you know this. What are you talking about? This is not your first road. <laughs> well, today we are celebrating March. Up. March, sure, we'll go on March. Mark, try Mark, right? Mark Heitschman, who is celebrating 30 years of service with CDTA. Um, Mark came to us in 1994 after working in a restaurant and in landscaping. He also drove school buses for a couple of years. And after a tip from a colleague that CDTA was hiring, Mark decided to apply. He interviewed with Mike and was hired right on the spot. So like almost... Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh is that maybe that... Fact check that piece, right? Yeah, it was about a half hour later. <laughs> So like almost all of our bus operators that were hired um, by CDTA at that time, Mark started as a part-time STAR operator. And after four months in STAR, Mark moved over to our fixed route operation in Schenectady. So over the years, he drove a few different routes, but settled on the Route 5 corridor between downtown Albany and downtown Schenectady. In fact, he worked on Route 5 for nearly 25 years, and more than 10 of which were on the 905 Bus Plus BRT. Mark is now um, in Amsterdam operating our Route 602, which is our line from Amsterdam to Schenectady. He enjoys it and says that it's a nice change of scenery, and he enjoys meeting all the new customers that are out in Amsterdam, and that is one of his favorite parts of the job. Mark has also served as the Vice President of the ATU and as a grievance representative, and we do thank Mark for his service as a union official. Mark has made a career uh, of driving at CDTA and says he likes to mentor new operators and show them the ropes and some of the tricks of the trade. He is also Schenectady's resident <laughs> barbecue master for those of you that don't know, and he's usually at the grill during events out in Schenectady. In his free time, Mark enjoys playing golf, woodworking, and trips to Old Orchard Beach, Maine. And he says that he goes to Florida to see his father every June and they go fishing in the Gulf. Mark says that he wants to stick with CDTA for a little bit longer, maybe as a bus operator, maybe moving over into a union leadership role. He says time will tell, but one thing is for sure that we are lucky to have Mark here and congratulations on 30 years. So Mark and I have known each other for a long, long time, obviously. Uh, he, um, <laughs> I got to know him when he was, <laughs> when he first took the grievance job over in Schenectady. Um, and, you know, he was an officer. And we, we negotiated a contract together. And, um, you know, and over time, you, you become friends with people because you get to know them. And um, I remember he had some issues in the 905, you know, and, and half the time, half the time he was right. Um, <laughs> wasn't, but I said, yeah, you ought, really ought to try Amsterdam. It's a little different pace. Uh, I think you might enjoy it. And lo and behold, uh, he's in Amsterdam. And riders, and you'll hear about this later in the meeting, ridership there is also growing you know, at a rate of about 15 to 20%, like the rest of the system. And Mark is experiencing it. He was telling me something about the first couple of trips that we might you know, be able to reach out to some employers and, and tie some things in. So that's the kind of employee he is, you know. Um, he's, he's always really, at the end of the day, interested in making CDTA better. Appreciate, appreciate that. Mark, appreciate everything you did. Appreciate you, Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to um, committee reports. I'll kick it off with the Board Operations Committee that uh, met on January 17th. Uh, we reviewed the agenda for the uh, various committees, which we'll be hearing about shortly. Uh, and as a result of uh, uh, Dan Lynch's uh, departure, uh, we uh, uh, named uh, Peter Wall as to chair the Performance Monitoring Audit Committee. So we'll hear more from Peter later, but thank you, uh, 
Peter, for joining us. Uh, the committee also discussed other vacancies on the board, Warren and Montgomery County being uh, on point. Uh, uh, Carmen has spoken with the governor's office, so we're working to get uh, two new board members here. Lisa uh, Morella provided us the advocacy update, uh, gave us uh, information on the governor's state and state address uh, and the preliminary uh, budget. Uh, the governor's budget request provides for an additional 8% in state operating assistance to CDTA. Uh, so that's a great starting point and we'll be keeping track of that over the next couple of months. Uh, the next meeting of the committee is uh, Wednesday, uh, February 14th, 9.15 a.m., right here at 110 Waterville Avenue and via Microsoft Teams. Any uh, questions about that report? Hearing none, we'll move on to uh, the Performance Monitoring uh, Committee. Uh, Peter Wall making his <laughs> initial report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My, I, I, as you job. said, Pat, I need the walk-on music. We'll get there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. Appreciate that. Um, the committee met at noon on January 24th, 2024, here at 110 Waterbleed Avenue. Um, I'm going to go over the, some of the consent agenda items right now that you have on, on your agenda. Approving the contract for planning software. A sole source contract is required for this planning software to help design, plan, and map right routes. The current contract is expiring. The program allows planners, schedulers, and operation staff to develop routes and evaluate costs and the impact of proposed changes. We need a motion to award a three-year contract to Remix of New York for a total of $148,750. Do we have a motion on that? So moved. Okay, thank you. Second. Second. Denise, any uh, questions, comments about this? Hey, this is, you know, there's some questions in the committee when we talk about this. This is sort of behind the scenes software that you may or may not have been exposed to along the way, but the, the folks up in planning use it often. Uh, it's integrated with our scheduling uh, software to sort of give them, you know, really uh, bird's eye views of, you know, service, service efficiencies, cost, what would happen if we added a route, changed the route. Um, so it's really behind the scenes stuff, but um, really valuable tool. Uh, for our planning team. And we've been using the software for many years many now. Years, yeah. Okay. And if you look at the per year cost, it's, it's not much. You can't, you can't buy off the shelf software for this kind of thing. All right. Any other questions, comments? All those in favor of uh, the uh, contract with Remix, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? It's approved. All right. Move on to the approval of surplus sales. Each year we dispose of equipment, vehicles, and parts that are beyond their useful life. Items are auctioned on eBay, sold for scrap metal or recycled. Through these sales, um, $87,529 were returned to the operating budget. And we need a motion to approve the report on disposition of surplus items. Thank you, Denise. Second. Second. Thank you, Mike. We do this every year. Any, uh, anybody have any questions about it? <clears throat> no? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. All right. The approval, we're moving on to the contract for fuel. We monitor fuel costs looking at forward pricing provided by our, su our supplier, Narabado. Given the volatility of oil disruptions to the fuel market, future pricing recently dropped to $275 per gallon from $3 per gallon. Since our current pro pro uh, contract expires on August 2024, it was prudent to lock in this price. The $2.75 price is less than our current price of $2.78 per gallon, and it will lock in our price for one year starting in September 2024. We need a motion to award a one-year contract for diesel fuel from September 2024 through August 2025 to Morabito Energy Products of Binghamton, New York, for a minimum contract value of $5,900,000. Motion on this. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Can we do this periodically? Yeah. The price, it looks like. Yeah. You know, we've got a great partner. Um, Done with Morabito. We talked about this in committee as well. We talked with him with Morabito for a number of years. We, we changed once. I remember it vividly. Um, company out of Boston. It was uh, not good. 
Um, but the, the, the things that you don't hear about, it's a seven and a half million dollar light item. Mm -hmm. What you don't hear about is, in addition to the, you know, the fancy projections and pricing, they're here every day, you know, making deliveries uh, here at our other facilities. And honestly, that is really where they, uh, I think, earn their, earn their keep. Um, they do a phenomenal job. We seldom have issues. Uh, if there are issues, they're corrected. Um, so it's a relationship with a vendor that, that, that really is top rate. Right. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor of the fuel purchase say aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's approved unanimously. Thank you. All right. We'll move on to some administrative discussion items. Um, the procurement <coughs> review uh, report. <coughs> the annual review of the procurement report reviews our processes, including change orders, sole source contracts, and our minority women business enterprise program. The committee discussed additional information regarding contract closeouts, change orders, and costs. The information will be provided in the next report, and the committee found the report satisfactory. Monthly management report. Our distinguished colleague, Mike Collins, did you like that? <laughs> uh, gave a monthly management report for December. We made a $3.8 million budget adjustment in December to reflect the additional state operating assistance provided after our budget was passed. MRT was 17% under budget for the month and is 6% under for the year. Customer revenue exceeded budget by 33% this month, mainly because of growth in our universal access agreements. Rail station revenue is 29% over budget for this month and 14% for the year. Because of the recent collective bargaining agreement and five-month retro payment, wages are 20% over budget for the month, but 6% under budget for the year. Similarly, because of the one-time $2.5 million payout to the employee pension plan, other benefit, benefits lines is significantly over budget. Overall, though, we remain in good financial position. Lastly is our, was our monthly non-financial report, performance report. Chris Desney gave the non-financial mm -hmm. report for December. Fixed route ridership is up 21% this month and 19% for the year. Star ridership is up 3% for the month and 8% for the year. Fixed route on-time performance improved and is at 72%. Star on-time performance was at 76%. We missed a fraction, 0.39% of all scheduled trips, and preventable accidents were at 19, and non-preventable accidents were at 12. The next meeting of the committee is scheduled for February 21st, 2024, at 12 p.m., right here at 110 Waterfleet Avenue. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Stick, stick to the script. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have any uh, questions about the committee meeting? If not, we'll move on to community stakeholder relations. Dave Stackler. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, there'll be no freelancing. <laughs> The Community and Stakeholder Relations Committee met on January 25th, 2024 at 11.15 a.m., both in person and via Microsoft Teams. Uh, staff provided updates on a recent STAR customer survey and community and stakeholder, I'm sorry, communications and community engagement efforts through 2023. John Scherzer provided the results of our most recent STAR customer survey. Our consultants at TransPro talked to nearly 400 STAR customers in the fall to gather feedback on the service. The survey looked at travel, travel purpose, the reservation process, and customer service. Overall, 95% of customers are satisfied with STAR service, and 98% of those surveyed believe STAR brings value to the community. Customers said they were most satisfied with the ease of scheduling trips, and safety on board our vehicles. They were least satisfied with on-time performance and with access to information on our website. Customers say the most important aspects of service are the span of operation, timeliness, and coverage of service. Jamie Caslow provided a year in review report on communications outreach, media relations, and community engagement. Through the year, CDTA earned 195 earned media placements in television, newspaper, and radio, 
Stories focused on capital projects, expansion of service, and community partnerships. Some of the initiatives that contributed to Earn Media were the start of the BRT Purple Line, Universal Access Partnerships, and our merger with the Greater Glens Falls Transit. CDTA supported more than 100 organizations and businesses throughout 2023 to showcase our brand and reach into the communities that we serve. Jamie outlined goals for the 2024 Communication and Community Engagement Program. We will focus on innovation, community partnerships, and creative ways to tell the CDTA story. Our next meeting of the committee will be held on Thursday, February 22nd at 11.15 a.m. via Microsoft Teams and at 110 Waterbleed Ave here. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Dave. Any questions about that committee report? One, one question. Was there any specificity given but about the, what information was lacking on the, on the website? Uh, it said that... Yeah, what's well, the information? Was it, it was general, right, John? General. Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, there there might be the answer drilled down, but at the end of the day, I think it's you know a functionality of finding the section, oh. and then it's also in particular it's the star booking component as well, probably because scheduling occurs through kind of like a an adaptation of the website, you know, book directly on this kind of section. There. It's been a slow go in moving people over to a more automated booking reservation system. I don't know if people are, I don't know if there's a trust issue, uh, uh, but it's, it's a slow problem. We're, we're doing well, but not as well as we would like. People that use it low. Yeah. But most people, as we talked in the survey, eight out of 10 want to speak to somebody. Still want to speak to someone. And I get that. Yeah. I want to speak to someone too. <clears throat> but the, the tool works. We know the people who use it like it, but it's been a slow go. Good. Anything else? We'll move on to the next committee, Strategic and Operational Planning. Mike Grishow. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> um, we met uh, last Thursday, January 25th, here at 110 Water Valida and via Microsoft Teams. We had one administrative discussion item, and that was the BRT Priority Corridor Study. Mike Williams provided an update on the BRT uh, corridor feasibility study that is currently underway. With the rollout of the Purple Line, our 40 miles of BRT vision has been completed. It is now time to examine the rest of the system and look for opportunities to consider BRT implementation in other corridors or at least priority treatments. CDTA is leading a study with our planning partners in a study advisory committee that includes the major urban cities, several municipalities, and other key stakeholders. We looked at high potential segments with performance criteria and ranked the top 11. Five of those were chosen for further development based on cost, need, ridership, travel time, and several other categories. Three of those concepts were advanced for more detailed planning and design. Concept number one identified a potential BRT line between Schenectady and downtown Troy, continuing on to Hudson Valley Community College. Several representative uh, station concept plans were developed with a focus on transit priority measures, shelters, and pedestrian accessibility and safety. Concept number two involved the new belt priority corridor, similar to the number 100 bus route. Concept number three involved the priority corridor originating at Latham Circle, continuing on to the airport, Wolf Road, Central Ave, Madison Ave, and terminating at the train station. It was noted that these ideas will be accommodated in the TDP, and while they will not be specifically called out, the TDP will not preclude us from pursuing any of them. Next steps include performing a ridership potential analysis, looking at high-level cost, and examining Title VI considerations. The next meeting of the committee will be on February 22nd, 12 p.m. here at 110 Waterbury Ave and via Microsoft Teams. And that concludes my report, unless there's any further comments or questions. Anybody have anything for Mike? Yeah, more to follow on, on uh, the study that Mike, Mike spoke about. Um, there's not a clear fourth BRT line. Um, the closest we see here is 
Was it Mike Green? Yellow? Green. Green. Uh, you know, would connect Troy and Troy Latham is given a disconnectedy. It's a possibility. But what we do know, uh, and the study is, is, is proving that, uh, is that there are components uh, that we have on BRT lines that can be applicable to major trunk routes, uh, things like queue jumpers and things of that nature. So we'll pursue all that and, and everything will be funneled through the committee. Yeah, good reports this yeah. month that the committee yeah. meeting something from the uh, STAR customer survey and the BRT uh, mm -hmm. policy review. That was good. Yeah. It was a very interesting meeting this month. Uh, we'll move on to the chief executive officer's report. Thank you, Jamie. My report is in your in your packet. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll move a little off the report. Um, because most of most of my report is actually covered in the committee meetings, which is really the way it should be. But you may or may not know that every year we have this little one page or two sided that you know, talks about the major accomplishments uh, over the past year. It lines up with some of the reports you heard in committee. Uh, it also is a um, basically a the shell of a media advisory that, that Emily DeVito will send out after the meeting. After every meeting, uh, Emily sends um, a news release that picks something in the board meeting to, to, to promote, you know, that we want to uh, promote. But this, this list of eight or ten things um, are what, I'm, I'm sure this will generate a couple of news stories because it talks about 40 miles of bus rapid transit that we've talked about you know, um, a lot in the last uh, several months, especially with the Purple Line coming on board. It focuses on ridership growth. There was a story, actually, uh, Jamie Castle did a story with Spectrum News on ridership growth. We were highlighted in an APTA study. The only places in New York with growing ridership are here uh, and Poughkeepsie for some reason. I can't figure that part out, but Poughkeepsie is a very small um, county run service. But um, we're one of the few places in the Northeast that's experiencing, really right now, year to date, we're almost 20% higher than last year. And it's across the board. It's all services. It's STAR. It's, it's FLEX. It's, um, you know, Mark and I were talking, in, in, in Montgomery County we're seeing a significant bump up in ridership. So uh, it's, it's, it's good to see. It's good to watch. And a featured component that will we'll be talked about is universal access. Universal Access is now up to 45 partners, generates nearly $9 million for the customer revenue line. So $9 million out of 20, give or take, right, is, is Universal Access. And, and frankly, we get a new one every month or so. We have a, a, a new one that started on Monday. It's a partnership, the Town of Colony and CHP, CDPHP and not Community Care is now part of CDPHP. They relocated their offices uh, Actually, right next door, yeah. neighbor of Denise's. Yeah. Uh, well, it's called Wellness Way. Yeah. Um, but our bus is now, they're not a Wellness Way, and now there is a universal access agreement with those entities. Um, so we talk about partnerships and, and, and the value there. Uh, obviously, the expansion north, uh, which uh, Pete asked uh, Jamie and I, Jamie uh, Caslow and I went up to the mayor's state of the city address in Glens Falls uh, the other day. It was his number one, his number one highlight number one accomplishment. There's lots of stuff that they, they've accomplished, but that was the number one accomplishment. That was great to hear. Mobility hubs um, uh, are also on the list. Renaming the rail station. I, I know some of us were a little, maybe a little nervous about how that's gone. It's been very well accepted. Uh, the community has responded favorably to it. So I, I think at the end of the day, we, we, we did a good thing and the right thing. Um, how we've charged up cycle. There's now 225, 250. Uh, e-bikes, and, and that will grow uh, this year. And then the expanded demand for service. We're still, you know, we still call Flex a pilot, um, but there's no doubt that it has, it has um, places in the region where it can either be a substitute or work in conjunction with our fixed route service. We introduced Flex Plus this Monday. Uh, after 20, more than 20 years, we now will have a direct connection between the rail station and downtown Albany. It always sort of stuck in my craw that we couldn't find the right way to do that. Um, early results are pretty good. You know, people are downloading the app and taking trips. Uh, maybe even Pat Lance's kids will be. <laughs> Carl Morgan was great is phenomenal on that because I've heard that issue about getting from the station oh, yeah. for yeah. decades yeah. now. Yeah. And uh, people were thrilled to find the article. Yeah, three bucks. Well, that's another example. You know, um, 
Emily and Jamie just take those things and have a relationship with the media. And we talked about that in Dave's committee. It's really about relationship building, and that's what they have done. They've built a relationship with the media, so they are trusted. Um, so when they send something out, it usually results in a story for us. Uh, we feature driving your career. Um, you know, the HR staff, you know, they're not down and out yet. They keep coming back. Uh, but uh, more than 100 people recruited, uh, 100 new employees uh, this year. And for the first time in a long time, we net, we're net plus. Uh, we, we, we recruited more people than left our company. And that hasn't happened in, in quite some time. And in the, on the transportation side, we're plus almost 30. So you know, maybe, maybe, maybe we're beginning to turn a corner. Um, and then lastly, all of our community events. And, and frankly, there's just too many to, to talk about. Um, and what we're trying to do is make sure that they represent the community that we serve. Um, so it's not just cherry picking, you know, important charities, very important, but more reflective of, you know, the people who work here and the people who use our services. So, you know, we circulate this. Lisa and I use it. It's one of our leave behinds. Um, in our elected official visits, you know, there have been many of them already, but there's you know a lot more um, in February and March. You know, we're, we're, NIP, NIPTA is still lobbying for a 15% increase in state operating assistance. We haven't moved off that number. CDTA is halfway home. Uh, the 8%, by the way, includes um, an additional $1.6 million for Warren County. So we've been successful as we add these counties. In, in, it, in increasing our state operating assistance, which I think makes the service a little easier to, to design and gives us a little bit of a buffer. Um, so it's been a, it's been a good year. Um, every year, it, it, I, always, I just get worried about topping it. Every year, you want you want to do better next year. So, um, and we we didn't put it in here because it's not our style. But the collective bargaining agreement is uh, a major accomplishment. And you know, hats off to Zach and people like Mark. Mark Heitchman, you know, who, who, you know, we've, we've worked with over the years. It was tough. You know, there were times when I wondered, you know, how long would this go? And um, at the end of the day, I think, you know, everyone said, this is important. We're going to get it done. And, you know, employee wages were important. We needed to increase wages. We needed to address, you know, uh, high-level mechanics, uh, service techs. And, and we did that. We're seeing already a, a, a turnaround there. We're able to recruit a, 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 a you know, higher caliber person. And then the pension. The pension kept popping up as a number one item and we needed to do something. And I think I think what we ended up creating, you know, the one time payment to the fund and increased contributions from both employees. You know, Pat's been very vocal about that uh, from employees and the company. I think serve serve the pension well. And the retirees. And yeah, we there's what is the it's uh, help me Mike, what is the, the new payment? Fifty-five up from fifty, uh, and it's the first increase in seventy years. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, years. the retiree thing was a, <clears throat> one time, yeah. which they've never gotten. Yeah, which we felt we needed to do. So hats off to everybody on that. A lot of lot of nice compliments from people. Yeah, and listen, we had we had some grumbling. Exactly. Well, we had some grumbling right after the contract was ratified and approved by the board. You know, everyone wants more, but that's that's really diminished, and I think it's it's settled. And it really it was about the people who work here. It was also about the people who will work here someday. You know, we needed to do some right sizing, and still some work to be done. But uh, it all and by the way, hats off to the people back in payroll. I mean, not a peep. It, it all got done, um, and there's a lot. Of, Oh my God! There's so much work involved back there to you know get get rates adjusted. Um, lots of work, uh, but it moved right on to W twos. So that, that concludes my report. Everybody got a W two, by the way. I think. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> any questions for Carm? Be careful with that. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Carm, for the report. Yep. Good positive report to start the year. Yep. Let's make it a goal that we uh, do that every month. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try. Uh, this is part of the meeting for board member comments. Anything anybody wants to bring to the floor? If not, our next meeting is uh, Wednesday, February 28th, uh, 12 noon, right here 
in the boardroom at uh, 110 Waterfleet Avenue. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Peter. Second. Thank you, Denise. Everyone have a, have a great day. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.